Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Handmade by Ying with Donna. Today is December the 30th, 2022, and tonight we're here to discuss the walkthrough, basically, of the elephant pattern. But first and foremost, I'd like to hop over into the chat real quick and welcome everyone. Thank you for taking your time tonight to join me. I have pinned my email in the top, so if you don't have my email address, it's Donna at HandmadeByYing.com. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things. It's housekeeping tonight, so please, if you have any questions, hit that email and ask away, or you can ask in the comments. So with that being said, yo Patty G, welcome sweetheart. Hey, hey, Dead Free Quilter, welcome. Dahlia, thank you, sweetheart, and I turned you blue tonight, and I greatly appreciate you accepting that. So, I have to slip back here for a second. My chat's bouncing all over, so give me just a second. Let me see. Um, Pat Boo, she left so Becca's. Hi, everyone. Susan, you're out. This is your first time to Alive and Welcome. I'm just skimming down through Linda Denton. Hello and welcome. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. Mary G. Guess who, Nancy? If I miss anyone, it's not on purpose. Janine, hello, sweetie, and Julie. Thank you, girls, for joining tonight. Jane, hello. Guess who, Nancy? Um, Jane, hi. I'm a newbie from Quiltmas and Sobeka. Welcome, sweetheart. Thank you, and I hope the content that we share is a, something to your liking. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, Laura Austin, hello. Martha's Creative Life. Tony Altman, good evening. Sandra, hi, Dawn, and all the quilters. Happy New Year to you all. Irish Sail Lady, good evening. Benita, hello. Cat Alley. Cat's Gallery, sorry I misspoke. Susan, hello. All I'm incognito, so you may not know who I am. And he may buy Ying. Susan, I can never forget who you are, baby. Tony, um, Dorlin Dale, hello, sweetheart, all the way from Colorado. Let me see. I think that's everybody, and I think I've just caught up. Hello, I just heard about Bar Barbara Walters passing. I have not heard anything about that yet. So I'm not going to say anything, but if she has our, our deepest condolences to her family and all of her friends, she was amazing. But if she has not, you never know if things get leaked and they're true or not true. So I'm not going to say one way or the other, other than on behalf of Joe and I, if she has our deepest condolences to the family. Let me see here. Um, Le Melina, hello, sweetheart, and June. Hi, darling. So, before I get started tonight, I'm going to drop the names of those that I know firsthand are going to be working the elephant pattern alongside of us. So, if I mention your name and I don't have it correctly, please send me an email and let me know. I have Don Denny, Christine Adams, Catherine Perez, Nettie Francisco. Sheila Gage, Teresa Louise, Julie Sis, Susan Shades, Shelly Moyer. That's the ones that I do have listed that is going to be working the pattern along with us. Um, Linda Denton, it was on ABC, so it's true. Okay, I was not sure. I'm just hearing it through the grapevine. Um, Channel is doing a special about her life right now. Okay, thank you so much. Sewing Sensations by Susan. She's in the chat. Um, let me see, Montgomery, hi there, I'm Deffrey Quilter, going to go ahead and say goodnight, but I'll look forward to seeing your progress on the elephant, Donna, it's going to be fun. So, before I kick off the elephant, there's a couple little housekeepings that I do need to mention tonight. So, first and foremost, from Tucker, he's away for the new year and he'd like me to extend his well wishes for everyone for a happy, healthy, safe New Year. Also, Courtney, she's had a death in the family. Her father-in-law has passed away, so please keep her and her family in your thoughts and prayers in the days moving forward. And she'll be back with us 
as soon as things clear up on her end. So that's our housekeeping aspect. I would like to show you my last project for those that have not seen it but did so long. We've got it done and she has quilted up. And I think it's going to be fun. I have the elephant pattern, but not ready to make it right now. Other things going on, but I'll, I would like to keep watching you. Absolutely. So, a very dear friend of mine mailed me the fabric for the binding because I just couldn't find that perfect one. So, with that being said, Susan, thank you for sending me this. All the tips and tricks everyone has shared with me has been amazing. To help this project come to life so this is it i can't say it's a she or he but this one is done so that's pretty much all you're going to be able to see on it it's got its label and it is ready to hang over here and wait on its other ones to be made as well so let me get that one out of the way. I wanted to make sure that I showed everyone that one. So let me move in here. Hi, Mona. Welcome to the chat tonight, Amy. Hello. Let me see. Congratulations, Mona. I'm trying to, um, fantastic job quoting the lines. That was a booger, but as anyone knows, as you're working a project, you take little baby bites of it as you're learning. I've never did the matchstick, so it was fun. Well, Donna, that's amazing. So beautiful. Thank you. And each and every one of these that we do, it's going to be fun. And I have a timeline worked out for all the projects for this year. And I hope that each and every one of you, as you see that what the next one's going to be, you're going to want to jump right in with me. So I'm trying to catch the chat. I'm doing the elephant pattern, but forgot to email you. It's okay, Nellie. It's okay. My email's up above next week. That's one of the things that I'm going to say is anybody that would like to come on the live with me that is sewing the pattern, you are welcome. That will be an open Zoom that we will be live on um, YouTube. So if you'd like to join us, please be prepared because it's going to be live. Um, Donna, your quote is beautiful. Hi, Kim, and welcome. Christine Wolf, hello. Brenda, I'm trying to catch everyone as they're coming in. If I've missed anybody, I greatly apologize. So, I have did the housekeeping. I've told you about Tucker and Courtney. I've read off the list of names. If anybody is still on the fence, it's not too late to get the pattern. So, let me slide this down. And we're going to start the process. I'm going to drop this in the description box as well the timeline of this so that you're always going to be able to go into the description box and you're going to see what part of this elephant you're going to be doing each and every week it's and i'm also going to put it under my community tab so if anybody ever has any questions you can either email me at the email link above dawn at handmade by yang.com joe catch that email and he'll tell me the question if we find out as we're working this project that anybody is struggling or in a certain part of it or you just need a little bit extra boost shoot me an email i will send you a zoom link and we can sit and sew this up together i will help you tucker well as well as courtney so this is our basic timeline and i'm going to show you right here how this is going to come out this is the elephant that we're doing and if you're still on the fence, it's not too late. This is officially going to kick off next week. So what I'm doing tonight is walking through and telling you what steps that you got to be ready for for next week. This isn't, Mona, this is an easy one. If I could do the other one, trust me, this one's going to be a cakewalk. The pieces are big. It's going to come together really fast. So I'm going to hold this up. You won't, you might not be able to see my writing, but I'm just going to show you how it's divided into sections and where you see each section. Yeah, you can see my writing. We're going to start with the trunk 
for week one. Week one I have listed that we're going to actually be doing the project for the 13th. But next week on the 6th, we're going to be cutting out our pieces, tracing our pieces. You do not need to have them all done at once, but you do need to have 1 through 17. So on the 13th, we're going to say 1 through 17, the trunk. On the 20th, we'll be doing 85 through 97, and that's the very bottom. That's going to be where you're going to do your toes and things. On the 27th, we're going to do 73 through 84. That's going to be the left bottom leg. February the 3rd, we're going to do 38 through 52. That's going to be the right bottom. On the 10th of February, we're going to do 13 through 37 where my finger is. That's going to be the right ear. On March the 3rd, we're going to be doing the left ear. And then this project will be done. I will drop all of that information in the description box below. So let me see if I've got any questions before I get started with showing you tidbits on this pattern. So let me slip down here. What experience level? I've already done that. I just checked the Amazon pattern. Should be here on Wednesday. Susan, you're good to go. Um, let me see. I'm just skipping down. What um, you can do, it, dear, I will help you with it. Absolutely. Everybody can do this. It's going to be fun. Well, um, what's better to have solids or prints? I'm going to show you because mine's going to be a mix. Courtney's going to be doing hers all scrappy, and she's going to be back next week to tell you what color selection she has chosen. Tucker's going to do his own spin on it, and I'm sure it's not going to disappoint anyone. I have my pattern, and I have it copied. Got it all of my pieces cut out. All I got to do is cut out my fabric and I'm ready to go. Beverly, do not cut your fabric. Hang tight on your fabric. I know some people is pre-cutting. If you're really good at FPP, you can pre-cut your fabric and hook it to your parts. I personally and Tucker have tried it with this elephant just to see how lining it up is going to go. You're going to want to cut bigger, and we're going to go into all that information. So, right now, Beverly, I would say hang tight on the cutting of the fabric until we come together next week. It's either going to be saving you, or it's going to be delaying you. Um, you are all set. Yes, Amy, bingo. God love you, Amy. Um, I have friends who made the elephant quilt in pink for her daughter who thinks it's the best Courtney did an elephant, and I'm sure she might be able to show that when we come together next week. Um, you can ask questions all along the way. I will have a moderator with us next week who will be reading chat so that we can just keep streamlining and working with whomever comes on the live with us. So the way that I did mine and the way that the others are going to be doing theirs, it's pretty streamlined. Some people have asked us, how do you do the pattern? It comes and it's double-sided. You need to get your pattern copied. There's no other way around it. You can either um, use freezer paper method where you're going to be cutting it out 17 inches by 11. And that's your legal size. Then you're going to lay it down either on a lamp or you're going to tape it to your desk to where you're going to be able to see all the lines and see everything. Because it's really important you keep this quarter of an inch when you're tracing. You're also going to want to make sure that, like, you see the B. So you're going to want to put a B on it. So when you refer back to your pattern, that's where you're not going to want to mess up. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let me show you how I laid mine out. You are free to do yours however you would choose. But it's easier to do it along with us in the steps that we broke it down. There's no um, better way to do it than little bits. And you can work ahead if you want to and then still join us on the live. But I'd highly recommend you break it down into the sections. 
I bought um, Reynolds freezer paper. Exactly. Mine is set up. That way I can show both ways. Courtney's is all going to be the freezer paper. Tucker's is going to be um, half and half. And then I have did mine to where I'm tracing it on regular paper. I've traced it on freezer paper. And then I've photocopied. So mine's going to be three different ways of showing you different ways that you can do this. Um, how did you find all the different shades of fabric? I'm going to show you that. And it's going to be really easy once I show you. Um, Zandra, what different shades? Okay, so the way I broke my pattern down is I cut my parts out 1 through 17. And this was after I did my tracing. I'm going to open this one up and show you. I'm just going to pull a couple parts and then I'll lay them down. This one is just my regular paper. This is just photocopied. So, as you can see, when you're photocopying, you're going to lose a little bit of color right here, like my ends. I lost my colors, so there was no markings, so I had to refer back to my pattern to find out what needed to be here and what needed to be here. My pattern called for zinc and fog. All these little lines, I'm foggy, Joe. There. Um, all these little lines, they mean something when you're doing your pattern. That's going to refer you to the shade, whatever's on your pattern. So it's really important whether this is the color you're using, you need to use these words on your pattern. And I'm going to show you that. Regardless of your colors, your pattern has a swatch down the side. It's going to give you your fabric requirements on one side. And this color palette, you do this any old shade you want. I'm going to show you the colors that I selected. And they're not the same as what the designer of this pattern has. But I needed to tape them to my pattern so that I would be able to cross-reference with what color and what I wanted where. So I'm going to hold this up to give you a little bit of an example. Here is all of your... I got to go over here. I'm not really good when I'm doing this. This right here is telling you the color of each part and how much you're going to need. You really need to pay attention when you're looking at your pattern what colors and the like the snow, it's the tusk and the highlights. The bone would be for your tusk and your toes. You're going to need two different shadings. And then the pewter is the hind legs and the triangles. Now, if you go over here and you look at my my colors, you're going to see, like right here, my color is mixed. So my colors are not the same as the pattern, but mine's more of a grungy, different kind of a look. So where it had fog, I went with this color. And then for my curry the curry is your background fabric right here mine's a blue grunge mine's gonna look like it's walking out of a evening sunset kind of thing so that should give you a little bit of an idea and i'm foggy again we're trying to fix this camera situation okay. there you go I did mine in pink with green background, great pattern. Um, Mona did what? Good for you. Quite a few doing it. So many. Um, give it a hand. Absolutely. So, with all of that being said, this is the way I did mine. I printed some on paper just to demonstrate so that you would be able to see that it doesn't always transfer. So, when you open up your pattern, if you find that you... You have nothing that comes through, whether you're copying it at home or you've sent it to like Staples or someplace to be copied. This is going to happen throughout your pattern from time to time. You're going to really have to pay close attention. So we know A1. So you're going to come into your pattern right here and you're going to look for A1. We know that's in the trunk. So then you're going to have to come over here and this is where it gets tricky. 
you're going to have to pull it up and look for whatever them colors are, whether it's the lines, whether it's a little um, heart, whatever that little symbol is that means a name of a color that you got to really pay attention. You won't notice you've made a mistake until you're further along in the process. And then when you go to join, you might have one white ear and one blue because you don't know exactly what's going to line up as you're building your parts. So you really need to be careful. Like, as an example, I photocopied, this is freezer paper, I cut 8 by 10 8 by 11 8 by 11 sections and ran it through my printer at home just to see how that would go. And I got very, very faint lines here, so I still had to refer back to my pattern to find out what that was going to be. I did it with a toner printer, and I did it with an inkjet. Either one of them did the same thing. So there's certain lines that you're not going to be able to pick up. So I'm just showing you a few different ones. I did every other one for the first three or four sections of this to show you. So like this is regular um, print paper. This is nothing fancy. This is my freezer paper. And then I went, this one here is the translucent paper. This is where I wanted to just show you guys, because I already had a copy of my pattern, but people ask questions, so I've answered them. I'm going to show you. You can mess up your pattern really quick, but you got to realize it is two-sided. So I made sure I had both sections of my pattern because I didn't want to jack up the real one, but I needed one piece. So I just chose one to show you. It's going to make it a little more, more challenging when you're sewing it together because you're bending and you got to watch what lines you're bending on. This is not a hard process to do, but every step of the way, once you get them all cut out, you've got to make sure that you cut a little bit bigger when you're just cutting them out because you don't want to cut it on your quarter inch line. You want that buffer. And then when you're trimming down the outside, as we go along, you're going to have that little extra. You need that quarter of an inch for when we're joining all of this together. It's really, really important. I'm sure it's going to look great. It's going to look, it's, I'm really excited for this one. So, like I said, I've, I've went every other one with different um, templates made, whether it's my standard printer, whether it's my um, newsprint, whether it's the inkjet, whether it's the toner printer. I did all of the first three sections, every other one, just so that I could demonstrate different techniques that you need for different ways that you're doing it. So I hope that helped you and did not confuse anyone. When you're breaking down your pattern, and we're only going to be doing so many pieces in a week, it's really important, and anybody that knows me knows, I break everything down into simple bites. That's the easiest way you can do a project. This one is labeled for week one. I know I'm doing parts one through 17 on Friday night. And if I don't get it done on Friday night, I'll carry it over to Saturday. Then I have week two. This is the bottom of the elephant. This is the feet and the toes. Some people are going to be doing the toenails of the elephant with different colors to kind of make it look like it has um, painted toenails. That's going to be really neat to see how they're all coming together. This section is 85 through 97. So, mind you, we're doing the hardest parts first. It's the trunk and the bottom. That's going to get you moving straight in. Uh, I'm sorry, not the hardest. The easiest two parts. Then we're going to be moving over to the front legs and things like that. So, week three is 73 through 84. If you finish week two and you feel confident, go ahead and start your week three so you don't fall behind because this one has a lot of parts. Week three and week four has a lot of parts. And as you can see, there's quite a stack. And I break them up 
that way i've got everything that we need as we're coming to a close week five has the apps week five has quite a, it's heavy but they're bigger sections so I have week five here, and it's 13, wait a minute, 18 through 37. And then I've got week six, 53 through 72. Now I've got to redo number 68 because as I was stacking it up, I missed it when I was tracing it. So it can happen to any of us. I thought I had them all in my little stacks. So as I was stacking it, I noted that I need to trace that one. And that's going to make sure that I've got every single part that I need for this pattern. And I'm going to put 17 back in where it goes because it slipped out. And I hang my patterns. That way I've got everything all in one spot as I'm working it. And it'll make it a lot easier and everything will streamline really well for you. Where do you get the pattern? Let me drop the, my affiliate link for Amazon in the chat so if anybody is interested you'll have the pattern and let me go up here let me just a second i should have already had that in there and i i apologize for that normally i would have already had it in let me see here Give me just a second. Here it is. It's coming your way. It's on sale this week for $19.94. So that's not a bad deal right now. A few of us have paid a little bit more for that as we've bought them a little bit ahead of time. So here I will pin this as well. So you'll have that link. Darn wish I knew you had an affiliate link. I already ordered. It's okay. I do have an affiliate link for all the FPPs. So if anybody's ever looking for one, just let me know. I do have an Amazon affiliate link. And I'll give you the links for whatever you're needing. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And it throws a little bit our way for our channel. So let me see. I'm going to go over the timeline one more time because it's going to be really short live tonight. And then I want to show you what colors I've chosen and how I've bagged them up. The timeline is going to be January the 6th. I'm going to invite everyone that's sewing this project onto my live with me. That's your time that you can ask questions. If you need help with your template, whatever you need help with, Tucker, Courtney, and myself will be there. And I'm also going to have one of my moderators join me. That way, they can be watching the chat while we're talking with those that are sewing, um, tracing, laying out their fabric, whatever the need is. That's the week that we're going to really hit the ground running and get that done. If you have any tracing issues, set that piece aside, put a post a note on it, and we'll circle back around and we'll get it done. Um, the 13th is when we're actually going to kick this project off. And that's going to be with the trunk pieces 1 through 17. So if you get nothing else done right now, it's really important to start tracing those sections. Um, D. Adams, never done FPP. Do you have a copy of the templates or can you use the templates included without copying them? No, you need to make a copy. You need to lay it down and trace them. The pattern... It has already been dropped up above. Let me see if I can drop that one more time for you. That is the pattern for anybody that would like to join in. It's never too late. Um, caught it from the grandbabies when I went over to see them at Christmas. I'm sorry if you're sick, sweetheart. I must have missed something in it. I've always made a copy. You can make copies. You can make photocopies and do them that way and then cut them out. Whatever the method is, Dawn, that you would like to do. Guess who, Nancy? The 13th is my 44th anniversary. Well, happy anniversary early, sweetheart. The pattern is double-sided when it comes to you. 
So it's really important. That's why I demonstrated on the one. I made sure that I had my sides both copied. And then I cut into it to show you it's a heavier weight paper. It's going to be more challenging. Some people have reached out and they thought you could just cut that up. Well, you can't. Well, you can, but you're only going to get half of an elephant. You're not going to get all the parts. And let me see. So I stopped at the bottom um, on the 20th. The 27th is going to be the toes. And the bottom left-hand side. And the list goes on. I'm going to add these dates in the description box of this video. I will also add it over to my community tab. Tucker will share it on his, as well as Courtney will share these dates on their channels as well. I always make copies. That way, I always have the original. You don't want to mess up your original. So, if you're doing the um, tracing, you can do the tracing from your pattern. Hello, everyone. Sorry to eat, eating dinner. Teresa Louise, honey, welcome. You're never late, sweetheart. So, let me see. I wanted to show you my colors before we... In tonight so when you're laying your you're getting your fabric I didn't realize how important it was to use your um, Ziploc bags they don't need to be freezer just storage bags these are the one gallon bags you'll thank me for it in the end you're gonna in your box here you write down like this is gonna be my background so I already know that I wrote should be curry because that's the color on my pattern but as you can see, curry is the yellow, and I'm going to use the blue grunge. My elephant's going to be coming through like a sky kind of look. So you can change your pattern to accommodate whatever it is you want to do. Hello, everyone. Helen. Welcome, sweetheart. Now, the wedge wood. This is going to be for the eyes. So let me see. This is the body. It's called coin. Now that, can you see all the different textures? I'm just going to throw these out here. This is clay. This is going to be for the front legs. I'm trying to keep it back so you'll be able to see it. The front legs I'm going to do in a deep gray. And it has a little bit of a grungy look to it. Then the trunk has stripes, as you can see here. Let me pull it up. So you can see these little stripes right here. That's what this is going to be. I thought it would look really cute. Kind of like a little grungy. Then the hind legs and the trunk triangles. Joe, I'm... Hold it, honey. Hold it up. And this, ha this is the hind legs, the trunk triangles. And it's just really cute. Then this is the eyes, the ears, and its um, color is going to be graphite. But is that not cute? All these dark colors is going to really make me look more like an elephant, I think. Um, the black is for any face accents that I want to tweak out with it. This one's for the ears. It's wedge wood, and it's going to give it that little bit of a skin tone look. I'm thinking on this one, I may end up changing, but we'll have to see. Because here in the pattern, as you can see, it's got these. They're not blue. They're like a turquoise color. So when you get the pattern, you'll see that it's really, it really stands out a bit. The hind legs, this is going to be the earth tone. So let me see if I can give you a good view of that. That's like a green grunge. Then I have the soft white. This is for the tusk highlights. And it's really important that you mark your bags. This is the tusk, the toes. This color is called cream on my pattern, but this is called dirty white. And that'll show a little bit more. And this is the main body. It's stone in two different shadings. You've got the grungy gray. 
Let me see. And then it's got the straight gray. And I think that just kind of looks really cute together. No rhyme or reason. This is just, I took the pattern with me, and this is what Joe and I picked out for this pattern. And I keep everything in my cart. And I have a cart set up for my FPPs. That way, everything's in line and set up. So when I need that color or whatever it says, I put, I look for what my colors are going to be and I move those to the front. That way I don't have to go rutting and rooting for them as I'm working my pattern. Um, did you do a coloring page? No, Tracy Louise, I didn't. What I did was I looked at the pattern and what I did was all of these down here, I knew what colors they were based on reading the pattern and looking and then i just whatever color they said it was going to be i taped little pieces of mine here because you have to follow their little color chart is what all of the patterns are marked so like when you see like i'm going to show you this where you see the b let me see i think you can see it like the B. On this, you're going to come down your chart and you're going to look for B. B is at the bottom. That should be yellow, my curry. I'm not doing the curry. I'm doing that um, grunge. So I hope that helps you out a little bit, Tracy Louise. Let me see. Um, I would like to join. I have the pattern, but I haven't bought the fabric yet. Can I watch this later when I have when I have all I need to start. Absolutely. You can watch it. You can join whatever you want to do. Um, D. Adams, you're welcome. I am not doing freezer paper. I don't mind pulling paper. That's how I am. I don't mind pulling it either. Um, I love your color selections. Thank you. Christine, I've never done FPP. I like to stick with one method and go for it. Is freezer paper the one you have... To hand trace no yes freezer paper is where you need to hand trace it and trust me when I say I did that on my um, lion and it was quite time-consuming so if you've got the time <coughs> to sit and trace all of that out feel free to do it what I did was on my smaller pieces I folded them in half and I just put them in my toner copier and I fed one piece through an 8x10 at a time, and it made the photocopy. But as I was standing there, if, it, if something didn't copy right, I made sure I wrote that if it was a B or if it was whatever the emblem was so that I knew what it was going to be and what that color needed to be. Like as an example on this one, this did not transfer correctly. Not at all. So I looked at the color chart based on the pattern, and I wrote the color right here. That way I didn't have to go back and look and double check myself. Um, so you're trying to match the colors. A little bit, yeah. You can, what you do is, the pattern has all of these markings, Tracy Louise. And I didn't match my colors really close at all. Like if it said white, I went with a bone or an off-white because the tusk has to be the set colors. But as you can see, I'm going to try to hold it without making the camera go blurry. My colors didn't really match a whole lot. I'm trying to get it without it going blurry on anybody. But that's pretty much how I did mine. But this middle section, I'm trying to get it to where, let me go this way. This is what's really important to everybody. This is the logos or imprints or whatever you want to call them that's on each piece of your pattern. So when you cut your fabric or you pick your fabric, cut a little tiny piece off and tape it to the side. And then mark your bag the same as if it says it's going to be curry, even though you're using blue, you write curry. Because your pattern, you're going to write whatever that color is. It It's going to make it so much easier. 
Um, let me see. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Absolutely all the dates will be in the description box in the community tab. Yes, they will. Hello, everyone. I would love to do one of these. Is a freezer paper or it's either or you choose your own method I broke this the first time doing a pattern to where I'm doing it with four different techniques of the paper I'm doing it with um, copier paper I'm doing it with the pattern paper I'm doing it with freezer paper as well as um, newsprints doing it four different ways to show the different techniques as we move along yes Donna um, Donna Kosh Yes, and it will be a live Zoom as well with everyone who wants to join in. Yes, it will. Um, if you copy, make sure you have the printer set at the actual size or 100% to be accurate. Absolutely, Julie. Just for cost estimation, what is the total yardage needed? Um, hold on one second. Color choice, your backing, I'm not including that. That would be three seven eighths. I'm not going to give measurements here. Um, let me see. That's two, three, four, five, six, about six and a quarter, seven yardage for the entire front. And then you've got your back, if that gives you a little bit of an idea. Most people are pulling from their stash because they've already got a lot of the colors that they would like. After we finish and finish it, can we make applique grass? You can do whatever you want. It's your project, Susie. I think that would make it even cooler. I might even end up doing that too. I love embellishments. Make sure you print it 100%. Um, how much fabric? I already did that. Or will it get messed up or busy? I don't think it'll get messed up. I think that at the bottom... I think it would look really cute to put some other embellishments on. I I know that's my intent as I get a little bit, like when we get the bottom done, and it's all in its completed state for like that section. I'm going to do something. I'm not sure what. I'm going to try to use the fabrics that I have. I think that's the best way. We all have so much fabric. Oh, yes, be sure you have it printed it will say that in the pattern and it does i'm going to read you these couple lines right here for those that's still on the fence about it um let me see instructions assume basic knowledge of fpp tutorials and additional information could be found on my website violet crafts before beginning this pattern you must copy or trace the pattern templates at 100 percent to retain the original template so it's really important and it's 11 by 17. make sure that it's dark enough setting that you're going to pick up all those details as you can tell some of my details didn't come out so i went ahead and just wrote in the colors that's what they're talking about the details of those markings that's going to tell you where you're going to locate your colors Use the fabric selection guide to the right to determine your color choices. Tape a small piece of the fabric over the other color so that you don't lose track. And that's going to be your palette. So I hope all of this information helps everyone along the way. And like I said, for those that come in late, this has the weeks, I don't want to get too close, of what part we're doing when. Work your pattern at whatever pace you want, but I'm going to stick with what we're working at that particular time. So if you jump all over the place and you come to me for help and we're only on a different section, I'll have to stop whatever we're doing and slip over to wherever you're at and try to figure out what your need is. So if you can try to stick with what timeline we're working, that would help us as well as make it easier for us to help you. Um, let me see, Mona, like every project, make sure you have a bit more in case of boo-boos. Absolutely. What I did when I bought, bought my fabric and I pulled from my stash is I pre-cut what the direction said, but I upped it by a quarter of a yard. Everybody knows that when you're doing FPP, there is a little bit of waste. Some people like to cut exactly what the pattern measurement is, and if they're 
amazing with FPP. Feel free to go ahead. Tucker and um, I, as well as Courtney, did a couple little samples, and it's just not the way that we're wishing to demonstrate. It's it's just more challenging for those that are either learning FPP or at like a level one, two, to where it would make it more hard for them to line up certain parts. So with all of that being said, when we end this pattern on March the 3rd, I'm giving you the heads up. This is quite heavy, and this is going to be a large pattern as well. We're going to be moving on to the tiger, the tiger next. So if you like that pattern, hang tight over the next couple weeks after we get this one about halfway done. I'm going to be dropping the affiliate link for it so you can go ahead. This one, we're going to be pulling from our stash. And it's going to be a cool one too. Um, let me see. What's ahead for our channel? A few people have been asking me. Um, we're going to do a lot more project-based this year from beginning to end. We're going to be pushing out tutorials on different blocks and different patterns that we've been cleared that we can use and demonstrate. Um, I've went down from four box openings to two to allow more time for me to work other projects, doing more scrappy projects, as well as Dahlia Castro Short and I are going to be doing AccuQuilt um, demonstrations and putting some blocks together as we're working a few things out so we're going to be showing you different techniques it's going to be fun i just did a paint by numbers tiger i bet it is beautiful and i can't wait to see it Teresa louise i tried cutting the pieces to the size but most i cut on the wrong side and then the shape was wrong it makes it harder so we're going to talk about different techniques for your cutting when we come together next week, it's not going to be just about your tracing, but I would seriously implore upon you, if you have your pattern, go ahead and set up yourself for 1 through 17. You don't have to have it all traced out, but find those parts in your pattern guide and kind of get them all on top. So it'll be easier. If you've got access and a way to copy them, Feel free, because it's going to make it easier. I would tell you, do not cut them out any shorter than a quarter of an inch at that quarter of an inch line. Give yourself that little bit of buffer. It's going to, you'll thank us in the end. So with all of that being said, it's been an extremely long day on my end. I don't want to keep you all any longer. So it'll give me a chance to end the video. Get these dates into the description box as well as into my community tab. I'd like to thank you all for joining me tonight. If anybody would like to join the live and you're sewing the elephant, please. It's really important because I have my list and I've got it right here of the ones that'll be, the links will be sent to you. So if I send you the link and I'm calling out your name, then it's going to be live on YouTube. If you do not want to be live with us, that's okay. You don't have to be. Just so from home, but send me a little message that says, thanks for the link, but I'm not going to use it. So I don't keep throwing the link to you because every week the link will change. I'm going to give the names one more time of those that I know are going to be sewing with us. I have Don, um, Don Denny, Christine Adams, Catherine Perez, Nettie Francisco, Sheila Gage, Julie Sis, Susan Shade, Shelly Moyer. I think Tracy Louise is as well, but I have not double checked with her. I'd like to get her on with us as she sews up hers as well. So if you have any questions, email, email, email. It's Dawn Ed, handmade by Yang. Um Joe and I, on behalf of us, if we don't get a chance to slip on tomorrow and tell you, God bless you. It's been a fun, fabulous year with all of you, and you have made our channel possible and helped us grow. And with that, we're thankful and blessed. We want to wish you a happy, healthy, safe, and prosperous New Year moving forward. Take care. God bless. And we're going to end it here tonight. Bye-bye, guys.